Hey guys, it's Ryan with Bricks and Slabs, and I have got the top of the pizza oven poured and complete. Go. All right, so we built the forms. If you look down here, we got this whole arch finished, and all the brick is gonna tie into the top of this as well. All right, we're doing three and a half inches. We're gonna be putting rebar in here as well. And right now I'm mortaring these little cracks where the plywood meets the board so that when I pour the concrete, everything will, uh, the concrete will stay in here. Boy, it's really coming down. Also, using hardy backer board for the center because that'll just bond with the concrete really well. I double lined this mesh right here. Double lining this mesh allows me to fill the holes uh, with grout before we end up concreting so that the concrete doesn't slip down through it because I'm not going to be filling the cores of these or tying it into the rebar. I don't really see a point if we just tie it into the base. Thank you, Martin. Table is set. Everything is level. Um, it's been carrying for a few days now, so we are starting to do all the mapping and laying out of where the actual fire brick, uh, what we did with the markups. All right. So we are doing a 22 inch opening point will be here and here. It's that calcium silicate board. All right, so the opening is going to be here and here. And then we have got the entrance way here. We squared this up. This is also 22 inches. Um, and then this is 23 and a half back. Not that that matters, but I am going to get a good throat to the oven because you want your heat to come up and then roll in this hallway and then go out the flue so you get a really good draft going. You can convection cook here. Um, yeah. So next we're gonna be laying this stuff, garden edging. This is gonna give me a really nice two inch layer and I'm gonna do insulated concrete or what's called vermiculite. Uh, you can get this stuff at Lowe's. There's a million videos on how to make this. It's a five to one mix ratio. So five cups of that, one cup of Portland cement goes in here. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this form ready and I'll come back and show you what I did. All right, so we've used the line and setup of the outer dimensions. This is nine inches, I think. Uh, from this one, this one's 44, and you add nine inches, that's for a fire brick. So let me see if I can get a good way of explaining this. Uh, there. Right here is gonna actually start the oven, right at this point, right? This is, this is pretty much how this brick's gonna cut in. There's gonna be a fire brick. Cut something like this to match that angle, okay? And I'll, I'll try and do a video to get that the best as I can. But yeah, it gets a little crazy. So now we're gonna pour this with two inches of vermiculite. Then we're gonna put our entire pizza oven hearth or floor, I guess, whatever you wanna call it, on top of that, all right? Then the brick dome, after we've got the insulated concrete, then is going to come two layers of uh, calcium silicate board, right? I'll have one layer on the outside where the bricks sit and then two inches or one inch outside here where the bricks sit so it'll come all the way out to here and then one of them that comes out to here so I'll explain that later. But this is where the actual dome is going to rest. Then you're going to have three inches of insulation. Three inches of the one inch ceramic fiber blanket is going to go here. Then you're going to have your dome, your actual rendering of your dome which I like to leave two inches for to get a nice strong dome. Uh, I mean, but you could go three, I guess. I don't know if it's needed. But you make some homebrew and you're gonna render your dome up over the blanket 
after you've laid some chicken wire. So those are pretty much the basic setups. You're also going to need a gizmo or a trammel. Okay. This is one that I made. You do not have to buy a $150 one or go to a refractory shop or store or a pizza oven place. You literally get, this is a piece of plywood, all right? And this is a $7 caster wheel. Make sure you get the kind with the easy to remove and put back pin, okay? Not the ones you have to cut off, because what the fuck, or what the heck. Anyways, um, so this would go centered, your whole entire thing. And this is actually going to determine the angle and everything of your bricks. This is the most important thing in your pizza oven build, to have this thing not oblonged, wobbled, or your stone's not setting correctly, or the face is not being angled correctly, okay? You see, this thing right here is fantastic. And it does all the work, and it literally needs to cost you $5. I knew this place is an absolute wreck. I promise you it will get better. But we've got everything that we need now. We've got the buckets, the vermiculite, Portland cement. I went with type N and Google that. Anyways, um, you have got, uh, yeah, you've got a bucket right there. You're gonna mix five to one ratio. It's gonna go right in here and cure or dry. And then you're gonna have one layer of insulated concrete down, a place to set your bricks and to set your ceramic fiber blanket. That way if water ever hits this level right here, you've at least got that calcium silicate board and your hearth up. That was my only reasoning for doing it this way. Okay guys, after watching a bunch of videos, um, when mixing your vermiculite or V-Crete, you're gonna wanna mix your Portland cement into the dry vermiculite first. Okay, if you try and mix a slurry and put it in there, it's a bad idea. But mixing it dry, then adding a little bit of water at the time, not over wetting it to where it's soupy. Vermiculite holds a lot of moisture, more than perlite. I, I would recommend using perlite, actually, if you can find it. Uh, this is a lot smaller pieces. The perlite seems to come in a lot larger balls. This is going to hold a lot more water. That's not bad. You just might want to let it cure a little while before you go building a fire in there. Because remember, heat applied to water creates steam, and that makes bricks have a really bad day. So, yep, friendly tip. Okay, it should look like this, guys. That gray stuff mixed all nice and through there, okay? Completely saturated before you start adding little bits of water at a time. And you do not want it soup, all right? To make you like concrete, just expand the clay to Portland cement. I'm not impressed with the squishy. But I can what happened? Definitely gonna need more vermiculite. Like that. Alright, so we have got to mix this one now real quick. Alright, so once you get the beetcrete, you're gonna screed like you would regular concrete. Keep in mind, there's a base of fire bricks, a base layer of fire bricks going over top of this, and you're gonna use sand to level it. It doesn't have to be perfect, you want it level, but if there's little bits or divots or whatever, it's all gonna it's all gonna come out the wall. Yeah. So after you get your yeah. concrete spread <laughs> as good and as thin as you can over the area. That's all you do, you freeze like normal. It'll fill itself in in the gaps. Oh, so pretty. You gonna make Daddy famous, Harpy? <laughs> Your lipstick. Okay. I screeded this. And now I'm just smoothing it out. This is actually a refractory mortar that I made a top coat with just to level out the, uh, the insulated concrete. So this, when it's all said and done, I don't know if you can see that, that is spot on level. 
shouldn't eat much of the regular sand with this and this refractory stuff, the refractory mortar is pretty much the right type of sand with the right type of chemicals in it. So I figured it couldn't hurt. Even the regular sand would work if you want to do it that way. I just figured getting a nice concrete style layer would be better. 